Hello and welcome to the Battle Systems tutorial video for the Dungeon Bastille. This is a really great set. Um, it's a three sheet set and it's got this huge big central cage which looks great in your dungeon along with two smaller cages, a whole bunch of walls with like nice rusty iron bars in it, a torture rack and you know a table and a couple of kind of very uncomfortable looking beds for your cells etc. Um, a great set to add loads of atmosphere to your dungeon. So let's get straight to it and put this together. Ah, uh, very classy sheet with some things on it. Uh, and then you can see you've got uh, a sheet of this, which is mostly the big cage. Um, and uh, then you've got two of this sheet, which are both identical, which have got parts of the big cage on it, a smaller cage, and, and a bunch of walls. So I think what we'll do, and this. These are spread kind of, this is not like this is the big cage and then this is something else. There's various parts of this to make this fit onto three sheets. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna start, might as well start with this big cage and I'm gonna pop out all the bits for the big cage. So it looks like we've got this bottom piece here, which has got some little uh, parts to uh, pop out here that allow it to slot, the cage to slot in. So I'll do that. Side. And then we're going to need this part here at the top. We're definitely going to need this part here, and I'm going to pop out all these little white bits here as well. And we, we can just speed that bit up. Um, don't think there's anything more from the big cage on there, so I'll put that to one side. But what I do spot is this here, which if I pop those bits out like so. We're going to need this part. Those are to something different. And actually, because of we've needed to print this sheet twice, um, you actually get two of this. You don't need to have two. You only need the one. So I would save this one, and it just it'll look cool um, on your dungeon mat if you have like a little area. It's great for marking an objective point or something like that. So that's really cool. Um, so I'm going to pop that to one side as well. We won't need that. Um, and probably that's everything we need. Uh, well, actually, this is the one I need, so I'm gonna put that back, actually. This one I'll pop to one side in a mo. Um, I think that's probably all we need. So I'm gonna put all those sheets to one side, and then I'll just speed it up while I pop these little bits out. Okay, so here are the cage parts, the big wall, the, the main base. Um, this is something that we're gonna kind of stick around this, this bottom bit you'll see, and then this is a little uh, roof part to it. Okay, so first thing to note is you've got some half cuts here, like so, that will bend through. Oops. And then once you've got that, you can pretty see pretty quickly that you can then locate this into the little slots that are around the base here. Um, got quite a lot of greenery here, which I'd probably want to line up with the extra greenery here. Um, and we'll just see if that goes in there. Well, that's completely fine. That fits in there really rather nicely. And of course, what many of you guys are going to want to do is you're going to probably want to glue that in, in, in place um, and you, you know, perfectly fine. Um, just remember that if you don't glue it, then you can just flat pack this back down again. Um, and then this part here has also got a little bit of greenery here, which we like to line up there. Um, so you could then kind of pop this in here first, like so. And you don't want to push it down too far because this is coming out at an angle. So it's just not going to fit. I'm only going to put it in just a fraction, um, like so. You end up kind of like that, it doesn't matter if it's a bit wonky. Then you can locate this into place into its little area, make sure that the side bits are slotting in. Then we can push this down around here and around here. And now you've got this nice little 3D um, effect on there. Um, also helps to keep this in shape etc 
but again, you might just want to glue that in, or you, you know, depends on, depending on what you want to do. Uh, and then here, you've got just this roof bit here, which can kind of slot in here like this, and it just sits on top, like so. Um, and this enables you to obviously get access inside um, to put your miniatures in, and then awesome little place to have a little rescue area or something. So this is your big crate cage, as it were. I'm going to pop that to one side. As we've just done the cage, we might as well assemble one of these smaller cages, of which there are two. So I'll show you how to assemble one of those. Um, so first thing I'm going to do is pop this piece off, like that. Uh, and then very similarly, you've got this surround on here, which we can put just there. I'll pop that off to one side. And again, we've utilized, utilized the space inside of here, so we'll just put that to one side as well. We'll need that. Um, and then I'll just speed it up while I pop these little bits out here. And remember that some of these bits have got no white on them at all, like this. They still need to be popped out. I wouldn't throw these away because they make really nice scatter, especially if you've got some of the barrels from my other sets. You can literally just like pop those in there um, and they stick out. You know, never chuck this stuff away, it's awesome. Okay, so I'm gonna pop the rest of this out. So as you can see, we've got a couple of bits here. We've got the, the top piece and the bottom piece. And this is really simpy, sim simple, uh -huh. uh, simple to do, That's clearly hard to say. Um, I'm gonna put these down here like that. And then you're just gonna kind of find your way into here like so. And then just pop this down. And then you've got this nice little cage. It pops off really easily, so you're gonna want this. The other thing you can do with this is, is this is stamped side down at the moment, so it's rolling down. So if you put it the other way up, it creates a little bit more of a ridge so that when you put this in here, he says, making sure that I've got it all inside, it actually holds on to it a lot better. Um, personally, aesthetically, I like it to be stamped side down so it really kind of uh, blends in. You see less of the edge of the cardboard um, in, in that respect. And because this isn't really a particularly big item, I would add a little bit of glue around the edges. Again, just some simple super glue. Um, and that will just basically hold that hold that in place. So I'm going to do that now. Then once I've got in, that in there like that, I will basically make sure that I um, keep that very careful off to one side. I'll put it upside down so that none of the glue gets kind of stuck and you can't lift it up and that's that little piece done. So let's have a look at the next pieces on the sheet. Let's look at something to assemble. Well, we've got a little bed here, like a prison bunk as it were. So we're gonna need this piece. We're gonna need this little bit over here with a candle on it. I believe we're gonna need this little bit here. They're all labeled, it'll all say prison bunk. Um, so I guess I should be looking at the what it says, ah, this little bit that was inside the bottom of that smaller cage, it says prison, prison bunk. This also says prison bunk, it's a lovely little pillow, because you know, even our hardened criminals will need just a, a little bit of comfort. Okay, so we're gonna pop this together. Um, been a while since I put this together, so let's see if I can figure this out. I believe we're gonna go um, the downwards facing slot here, it's gonna just pop into there like so. Um, and then the upwards facing slot will be for the one with the candle in it. Um, then we can put this on here like so. And then what happens is the, the candle lines up with this little extra bottom, which you call that the base of the candle, the little pot it stands in. I bet they've got a name. And then what I would do then is basically you've got a pillar that can just go on there. Because you've got this little ridge, we can totally hide that ridge with the pillow like that. Um, and again, you could just, we wouldn't want to uh, disassemble this. Uh, this doesn't really need any glue whatsoever, but you know, for stability, you might want to just glue it all together because you're not going to take it apart. If you're going to do that, then I would totally just pop that pillar on there um, with a little bit of glue as well. So I'll do that. A little 
touch on that. Rest that on. Awesome, that'll stay on there. And then you've got this really nice little bunk of which I believe, well, there's, there's uh, at least two of those. So you've got two little prison bunks, that's great. I'll pop that to one side. What else have we got on here? Uh, for assembly, we've got um, these little stocks here. So I'm gonna drop that off and that off. I also, oh, that actually says uh, torture table. So that let's put that off to one side, let's not do that. Um, but I will take, there's a, a, that says stock, this says rack is going to be stocks as well. Uh, interesting. Oh no 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 this is this is rack this is the torch rack let's put that back on there. Um, so we've got stocks. Where's my other stock bit? Probably on this first big sheet maybe. Ah uh, yeah so I've got the stocks over here. Come here come here. Uh, and of course there's two of these sheets so I'm going to move the other stocks here. There we go. Um, that goes to the rack. I think that's everything for the stocks, which does make sense. Um, and if you look really carefully, there's even a little cutout piece where the head goes. Remy can have fun with these. You can always, you know, run a scalpel across here if you wanted. If you've got a couple of these sets, you can run a scalpel over here and then like um, two separate parts, lift it up a little bit and, you know, have one stock so it looks like it's open or something. Always good fun. Um, but as it is, nice and simple. Um, you're gonna just simply slot those two bits into here like so and this is gonna create your little stocks and again um, I would um, I don't need to show you this but you could just drop a little bit of glue in either side of there if you want that to be a little bit sturdier um, as it's probably something you're just gonna chuck in with your scatter terrain it's not gonna be a problem um, so you've got those lovely little stocks there put that to one side what have we got left so we do have um, this uh, torture table, so we can grab the bits from this. So I'll pop that off. Do, 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 do. One. And then this is also torture table. If you've assembled any of our tables that we've got in the dungeon set or uh, like with our, any of our other fantasy terrain this is basically the same as a normal kind of table okay so we're going to just put the legs on here like so and once you've got that on here you've then got this torture table here um, having stamp side down means that you'll have lots of clutter on it which is going to be like a little knife and some nails and uh, rather gruesome looking nails and some kind of um, chain restraints or if you want if you've got a couple of these you can turn it upside down have more of a conventional table so you've just got you know um, different uh, textures as it were as you go through your dungeon so there's not too many repeat patterns um, so there you go torture table and again this needs no glue whatsoever but um, you might just want to glue this for, 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 for durability so you're just chucking it in and out all the time that's that off to one side we've got one more thing to that really requires some assembly and that is the rack kind of the torture rack so I'm gonna pop off all the bits that are needed for the rack Okay, so here's the parts of the rack. Been a long time since I've popped this thing together, so we can figure this out together. Should be quite interesting. So we've got this, which is actually a base. Um, and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna kind of slot these into that base. And then we've got 
these two little pieces here which are going to have got lots of little half cuts in it so I'm going to just gently bend those round into a kind of a semicircle um, but just leaving a little bit of tension on that do the same over here kind of thing going on now this is one of those things that probably stays together but but without glue but ideally you're going to want some glue in this if otherwise so you don't have to assemble it every time you get it out of the box um, so these two bits would locate here like so which gives us this little shape here um, and then what's going to happen is this is then going to slot in over the top so it might be better as this is probably a, a tougher fit on here yeah this is nice so this holds really still in here now I can very easily knowing where they locate I can very easily kind of put that into position and so we've got this part of the rack we've also got taking this back off we've also got these two little pieces here um, so what I can do is I can drop those in here and one at the top as well and what this will do here is it gives us the little top and bottom pieces this is where you would uh, effectively put your um, put, put the the victims <laughs> hands and feet and give them a good old stretch um, and then um, what we'll do is we will uh, effectively just drop these pieces in here, one here and one here, and this fits on the top, like so, I'm going to put this here, and we'll glue this all together in a moment, I'm going to glue this all together, so you, just so you can see it here, um, and then on one side we would have this like so, so it creates the you know the handle that's going to lift and stretch the rack as it were and then on this side it would just be um, the same thing but with you know without the handle so I am going to just drop some glue into all of this just so that this is nice and secure so I'm going to do that now Now remember when you are gluing this together, make sure you glue this into the bottom of here first before you put these in. Otherwise you might not leave enough gap to slot this in. So these will then push up, plus it gives you something to glue these to. So I'll just glue across the bottom edge here, a little bit on these side, but I'll also run some glue here and here so that it, it will glue onto the side of the, the rack and also onto the side of these bits. So I'll do that now. So once I've got those two bits on, I can now nice and simply just glue the handles, uh, well, the, the, the wheel part of these, um, the rack, one has a handle on it, um, and then that'll be the rack done. And there you go, that's the rack done. Um, I think you'll agree that um, lots of little moving parts on here, but the finished effect is this really nice, 3D uh, rack, which is awesome. It's a great centerpiece to your, um, your your kind of torture room, as it were. So um, this is a really cool piece. I'm going to pop that off to one side. Doo -doo. What have we got left? Well, there is one more small thing to assemble here, which is basically a bucket. And if you've got any of our um, fantasy terrain sets, it's just the same as when you're putting together a barrel. Um, so what we've got, we've got a little base here, turn that upside down, and then I've got a bit like on the torture rack, um, we've got these little tiny half cuts on that mechanism, but this is going to create the outside of the little kind of bucket as it were, and what that'll do then 
is that I'll wrap around this little base here. Okay, we'll wrap around here like so. Um, and we'll just pop some, some glue in there to make sure that, you know, that stays in. Um, now when we do this, what I tend to do is to drop a little bit of glue at the bottom here and you don't have to you don't have to make sure that, that this base goes right at the very bottom and you take your base and you place it inside like this and again I've got this a little bit away from the bottom because once it's down it just means the base is raised up you won't notice and then what we'll do is we'll put this off to one side and we'll just leave that and get on with something else and then once this is dried you can then this will be nice and firmly in place we'll just glue around the rest of this area here and just wrap the rest of the um, the bucket around it um, so so yeah absolutely I'm gonna um, let that dry quickly with the magic of editing um, and then I can um, then I'll wrap it around in fact what I might do is even without letting it dry I might have a go and do it now let's see how successful I am now another thing you can do and I haven't got one to hand is you can get a little elastic band and you can wrap this round here to hold it in place so you don't have to hold it while it's actually um, while it's actually drying but um, yeah, I think we've got that pretty good. My glue's dried pretty quick anyway because my glue's getting a bit old and spongy. And it just goes to show that you can really, you know, even, even with my old glue, this works perfectly fine. But yeah, I'd certainly suggest cracking open a new glue to start. Well, I'm absolutely happy with that anyway. That's perfectly fine for me. Um, didn't really have to wait. So I'll pop that off to one side. Job done on that. So, what have we got left? Well, obviously it looks like there's a lot of things on these sheets, but actually we've got um, most of this we've put together. So what I'm gonna do, there is like a little bell and chain mechanism here, um, but I'm gonna pop off some of these walls first. So anything that's basically just says a wall or a half wall with a door, I'm gonna pop off all these parts and I'm gonna push out all the bits that we don't need, saving any that have actually still got a texture on it. So here we go. Okay, so here's all the walls. Um, you can see that we've got one of the um, normal kind of uh, wide uh, standard uh, size cell doors. And there's a half cut on here. I've popped out all these tiny little bits from to, to create this bar effect. Um, so this is really cool. So we've got this wall here. Um, I've got two half walls with little kind of um, cell bars in it. And then I've got, um, and there's two of each of these uh, styles. Then there's two each of these styles as well, um, which are kind of, one's got the bars on it, which are kind of intact, and this one's bars are a little bit broken, as it were. And then I've got two more half walls, again, that I've popped out all these tiny little bits for. Um, half cut in those, that allows you to have doors in those, and this one's the same, half cut in there, so you can have the door open or closed. Um, and then I've got this little pile of all the little bits that come out of these bars. I like to keep this in a little baggie because I'm completely nuts and then I can just scatter those into the dungeon for effect, especially if I'm going to you know, do some cool photography or just want to add extra three-dimensional um, effect to the game. Uh, if you're as nuts as me, I would certainly uh, suggest not throwing those away. Um, and just like any of our other walls, if you're using this set, you'll know this already, it utilises the clips that come in your main, main set and you can just clip these walls together to make really nice kind of dungeon um, sort of um, you know prison areas of your cells etc so this is basically um, uh, basically the, um, the, the the walls um, and the only thing we've got left now pop those to one side uh, is is our uh, this little heat this thing here which just says chain and then you've got like a bell um, so I'm just gonna pop these off
Okay, so I brought in a, uh, a dungeon wall from another set just so that I can obviously demonstrate the um, uh, what this actually uh, is, as it were. Um, so first of all, this is really simple. This is just a little bell um, that you can have on here. Great for signaling the uh, enemy um, or you know uh, calling the alarm in, in any any kind of stealth mission. That's really cool. Get to the guard before they get to the bell. So that's nice and simple. That just clicks into the top of the wall. Um, similarly, we've got this little kind of chain and rack thing here, which you can then use in unis uh, unison with this, um, which is a nice little surround that goes on the wall. And the idea is, is that we create this mechanism here that then would connect on to this pulley over here, as it were. So I'm just going to slot this into the bottom of the wall. Like so. So I've slotted this into the bottom of the wall here, and then I have just put this surround across the top. You don't want to glue this to a wall because obviously you want this to be something that is, you know, um, you can take off your walls for flat packing and putting away. You don't want to um, connect anything permanently to your dungeon walls. Uh, and so what you've got here is you've just got this big, big kind of uh, pulley system here that you could, you know, have in the dungeon for hauling up your um, victims as it were or you could connect this and just you know remove this bit and just say that it connects to some sort of door in another area and you have to activate this a bit like a lever um, it's entirely up to you um, but yeah that is those bits um, that is that little mechanism there and that's everything on the sheets so I'll just pull this all together And so there's all the individual bits that we've put together and don't forget this isn't even all of it because we've still got another one of these cages on here and we've got another one of these bunks on here as well there's also another chain mechanism um, and there's another little bucket uh, over here so so yeah this is um, basically uh, at least you've seen how everything goes together um, yeah um, absolutely cool really enjoyed that